When we're talking about Civil War medicine, inevitably we're going to have to talk about amputations. Amputations were the most commonly performed surgery during the American Civil War. Estimates have it at about 60,000 were performed over the course of the conflict. So why were so many amputations performed during the American Civil War? It really comes down to one thing, the mini ball. Slow moving, 58 caliber bullet, smashing through and damaging bone. Doctors in that time period had really two courses of action that they could take. They could perform what's known as a resection, where they'd remove the damaged sections of bone and then stitch the arm, back, arm or leg back together and the patient goes on with a limb, but they can't use it. The other course that they can do, and this is the one that they find to be more safe, is that they can actually just remove the limb altogether. The faster you remove the limb, the higher chance that the patient would survive. And that also depended on where the wound was actually located. If you were to amputate fingers or toes, you have a very high likelihood of surviving. If you are going to be amputating at the shoulder or at the hip, the likelihood that the patient is going to survive is going to go way down. But in all, if you were to undergo an amputation within 48 hours of the injury occurring on the battlefield, you would have about a 75% likelihood of surviving, which is really high for the Civil War era. One of the most common myths about Civil War amputations is that they were performed without access to anesthesia. In reality, Civil War doctors tell us that they were using chloroform and ether almost universally in the operating room. Medical and surgical history of the Civil War tells us that 95% of surgeries performed during the war were done under some form of anesthesia. So when thinking about Civil War amputations, we're just gonna pick up this saw here and we're just gonna start sawing through muscle and tissue and bone, right? Not quite. It's actually a much more intensive process. What we have here is a surgical kit from the Texas Brigade used during the Civil War. We pick up knives like this, it's known as a Catlin knife. We're going to carefully cut away the skin and we're going to leave enough skin behind so that we can make a nice flap at the end, make a stump. What we're gonna do after we cut through the skin, then we have to cut through muscle and tissue to get down to the bone, and that's where these knives are going to come in. Only then, once we have cut through all of that, do we actually saw through the bone. Civil War amputations are much more sophisticated than we commonly believe. With so many of these amputees returning to the home front when the war is over, they're going to need to adapt back to civilian life. One of the most important ways that they're going to do this is by receiving prosthetic limbs. A prosthetic industry is going to grow out of the Civil War. It is going to grow even more in the Industrial Revolution that is sweeping through America in the post-Civil War years. As for the prosthetic limbs themselves, there is a wide variety of prosthesis available to Civil War amputees, running from simple peg legs to complicated machines with hinges made of metal and wood. Because of these life-saving operations, these men were able to go back home start new lives, begin families, and help push the United States into the 20th century. They would not be there if it wasn't for amputations. <laughs>